Well, as we start week three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, boy, there's a turn of events. The garden has started to pump, and I will show you what the main subject, produce, uh, I'll show you what the main item is. Well, guys, week three for the Every Bit Counts Challenge is hitting us full force. Tomatoes are pumping. I mean, we're getting 50 pounds of tomatoes every day out of the garden. And, you know, all this goes hand in hand, actually, with another challenge that we're participating in this year, the $50 February 2022 challenge. So definitely check out that hashtag as well. Uh, all of these things that we're doing now in the Every Bit Counts Challenge are all going to help us to only spend $50 in February next year. I'm sure you've already guessed it, but yes, tomatoes. Day one of week three, I went out and picked tomatoes, 75 pounds worth. There's more out there, but I was trying to only pick what I could actually use, plus I ran out of buckets. So these have all been weighed, because that's what we do here. And now we're about to get started on preserving these. Uh, first thing we're going to do is get all those yellow pear tomatoes into the dehydrator. Because as you know, we're trying to get a bucket of those for pizzas over the winter. But stay tuned because there's a lot more to get made. And a lot more tomatoes to come. Once again, Chris is hard at work cutting up our yellow pear tomatoes and uh, our Alma paprika peppers in order to dehydrate. This is actually becoming a common scene in just about every week for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So now that we have dehydrated all those wonderful little yellow pear tomatoes, we're taking our white Thomasil tomatoes and we're going to be making our yellow tomato juice. I will make sure I kind of speak the recipe as we go and I'll write it out in the description because we have had um, a few people ask about this recipe. So. Without any further procrastination, we're going to take these cleaned tomatoes and we're going to get them going through my juicer. Now, when I say juicer, I guess I should probably say my food mill. Uh, I do believe that every canner should have one of these. I mean, this is great for tomatoes product, whether it's tomato paste or juice or anything like that. But it's also fantastic for applesauce or any type of vegetable soups that require everything to be pureed up. It really is a fantastic tool, so I can't recommend it enough. Mine is actually a Victorio food mill, and I'm not sure what age this is. It's old, but it still works fantastic. Uh, I would probably say they probably don't make them like they used to, but basically your tomatoes go in the top, the juice comes out this portion, and the excess goes into that bowl, uh, which is great for chickens or anything like that. So we're going to get going on my white Thomasil tomatoes here. So I don't know exactly how many pounds this uh, recipe calls for. It calls for 8 quarts or liters of uh, juice from the tomatoes. Now you can see here I've just finished off my first container of the juice from these yellow tomasols. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? Uh, it comes out nice and thick and so, so yellow and it's quite fruity. I mean we can't talk enough about these yellow tomasols. But uh, basically, that is what you require to do this recipe, is 8 liters or quarts of juice from your tomatoes. So it falls out of there quite nicely. We're going to keep milling these tomatoes until we have that. Alright, so this tomato juice is super, super, super simple to make. Uh, I conveniently have a, basically an 8 quart uh, canning pot here, so I don't actually measure this out. I just know that it's kind of roughly, once it cooks down, this is going to be about 8 liters. But at the moment, in my oven at uh, 225, I have my jars sterilizing. I do nine jars just to be on the safe side because there always is a little bit extra to chuck in the fridge. But we're going to get the rest of the ingredients into this so that it can all come to a boil. So you've got your eight liters of tomato juice. I will put a link to the recipe for this in the description, just so you know. One cup of sugar. Spices we have two teaspoons of sea salt could also probably use a pickling salt if that's what you had three teaspoons of celery seed now the recipe does call for celery salt but I find using celery salt just makes this way 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 too salty so I use celery seed but you can kind of adjust this to your own taste buds 
Then you're going to need two teaspoons of onion powder and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Just put all that in. Like I say, this is a spunky tomato juice recipe. So um, myself and uh, my friend uh, that I like to can with a lot uh, have been making this recipe for years. Last ingredient is one cup of lemon juice. Now this is important. You got to make sure this is in there. Puts the acidity in it. Also gives it an amazing flavor. So that's basically it. You're now going to bring this to a boil and let it kind of boil and rumble for about 10 minutes. Uh, by that point your jars should be sterilized and we're going to can it up. And uh, you'll want to water bath can this for 45 minutes. So hope you enjoy. Well, I ended up with only seven jars. I let it cook down for a little bit of extra time and didn't really have the pot full. So not eight quarts, but seven quarts and a bit for the fridge will do. One thing that I wanted to show you here, I have a jar of last year's. Now, what you're going to see is as this sits, you will see a separation of kind of the watery portion to the juice portion. That is normal. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. All you're going to need to do before you eat this is just give it a shake and it's perfect. That one is a little bit darker because we had mixed in some pineapple tomatoes with the, our, our yellow juice last year. And this year I am trying a batch of purely white Thomasol tomatoes to see if potentially that's the only yellow tomato that we end up growing in the future. But stay tuned to see how that goes. But either way, I hope you give this a try. It's a wonder, wonder, wonderful recipe and so yummy. Next on our list is our fermented salsa. I will link the video above for this one. I've uh, done this one as a recipe video, but we've got everything basically in the pot. We're chopping up our cilantro right now, which we also have another video on, on the simple ways to cut up herbs. And then we just need to put some of our garlic in there and we should be good to go. And there we now have our yummy fermented salsa, all jarred up and ready to go. A recipe made four of these uh, one liter tubs, which is fantastic. And this salsa keeps for ages once you get it into the fridge. So we were actually eating it in uh, February this year. So uh, definitely keeps for quite some time. So next up this week, we're doing some lamb broth. Now this has been simmering for hours and I've just allowed it to cool a little bit here to get into jars. And then we're going to pop it in the pressure canner. But that's just another thing going into storage for over the winter. All right, so we have our seven jars in the canner. That is what I was aiming for, was seven quarts. Um, so those have to be pressure can, 10 pounds pressure for 90 minutes. Um, so we're gonna get to that. But what I wanted to show you here was what was left over in our pot is wonderful yummy meat, which we're going to take off the bone and have a meal for ourselves and also have some scrap to add to the chicken bucket. Uh, so this is an interesting little project that's probably going to come up in a video a little bit later this year, but uh, we're starting to save all of uh, our kitchen, it's not waste, but excess, I guess, that we wouldn't eat to uh, come up with a product to help feed our chickens over the winter. So looking forward to some lamb curry later on tonight and feeding chickens way into the winter. So week three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge has gone fantastically. Here you're seeing some lamb broth, a whole bunch of yellow tomato juice, uh, and that's kind of just part of it that's still left on the counter. The other thing that we did this week was a lot of prep work. Again, uh, we have tomatoes in the freezer for pizza sauce this week coming up, uh, week four, because uh, I'm sure I'll be behind on this as I always am. But uh, week four, we've got pizza sauce coming. We have lemony basil soup as well as some orange tomato juice. And the tomatoes just keep coming and coming and coming. And I'm sure there's some other stuff that's going to be arriving out of the garden too that we have to start planning for. And I still need to unload the freezer. So I think we've got some more canning to come. 